One of Super Mario's most well-known animal transformations is the tanuki, or raccoon dog. Tanuki play an important role in Japanese folklore, and this is reflected in the games, since Mario's transformation not only mimics its natural animal abilities, but also its mythological traits like the ability to disguise oneself as a stone statue. From the outset, therefore, we're dealing with raccoon dogs as mythological beings. The way this is presented is as a full body suit which Mario wears, uh, so his identity as a human being is not lost. He is merely a man wearing a magical tanuki costume. However, one thing caught my attention when reading about their folklore. Apparently, tanuki have a series of traits that bring good fortune, and some of these are, for example, a hat to be ready to protect against uh, trouble or bad weather. Tanuki Mario doesn't wear a hat, but human Mario does. In fact, it's not just any old hat. If he loses it, as in Super Mario 64, he loses his health, so it does indeed protect him. The straw hat is a historically recent addition to the Tanuki's traits, but it derives from an earlier law um, in which Tanuki wear a leaf on their head, which helps them shapeshift. In some legends, the leaf is the sacred lotus plant of Buddhism, which represents illumination or the opening up of the crown chakra, so a hat. In his human form, Mario also collects plants that bring illumination, the most famous being the mushroom, the design of which mimics that of the Amanita muscaria psychoactive mushroom, and the fire flower, which also symbolically acts as a plant that brings power. The lotus of Buddhism could uh, only be a symbol but it could also hark back to the shamanic use of blue lotus flowers as psychoactive plants for religious ceremony. Another trait of the tanuki is big eyes to perceive the environment and help make good decisions. As most cartoon characters, Mario shares this trait. A big tail that provides steadiness and strength until success is achieved. Mario's original name was Jumpman, and he does jump higher than a regular person. If he had a tail, it would explain how he can balance and time his leaps so perfectly. But of course, he doesn't have one, or we don't see it. Tanuki use their hat to disguise themselves as anything they want, which would include them being able to take on a human form. If they did, their tail would be hidden, but it would still be a part of who they are. An oversized scrotum that symbolizes financial luck. This one is interesting. At a first glance, Mario does not share this trait. However, let's see what it represents. In Japanese, testicles are known as kintama, or balls of gold, whereas the scrotum is known as kimbukuro, or money bags. The tanuki's large scrotum does not mean overindulgence in sex, but rather luck with money. If we take a psychoanalytic approach for a second, it is common in myth to see a link between the storing of libido and the storing of wealth. So back to Mario, a famous video game trope which he pioneered was the collecting of golden coins as in-game items. No matter how many you collect, it seems like you just absorb them or your pockets are infinitely deep. They're also as big as his head much bigger than a coin should be, further emphasizing that they're not actual coins, but just in-game symbols. They give Mario health if he collects enough. So there are strong ties between life force, or libido, and money. If this were so, then as he collects coins, he's refilling his libidinal energy, and thus expanding his scrotum symbolically. Mario's name derives from Mars, the red planet, and in turn, it derives from the word male. Tanuki folk stories have them shooting fire out of their tails, like Mario does when picking a fire flower. And a Freudian glance would see the Tanuki's fire-spewing tails as a phallus, symbolically. Now, if Mars is red male or phallic energy, then Mario's red clothes could also refer to the base chakra, at the base of the spine where genitals are which would rise up to the lotus flower hat on the tanuki's head. A big belly that symbolizes bold and calm decisiveness. 
Again, a classic cartoon trait, but one that Mario shares nonetheless. Also, in Tanuki statues, uh, this big belly is a parody or nod to the classic image of the Buddha. So a possibility which I see emerging here is that Mario is not a human disguising himself as a Tanuki, but a Tanuki disguising itself as a human, as Mario. Despite their cute appearance nowadays, Tanuki used to be seen as ferocious deities in early folklore. They were tricksters who enjoyed duping passers-by, shape-shifting to scare or confuse them, and also transforming objects like worthless junk uh, into taking the appearance of valuable goods, also as a joke. They themselves not only poked fun at greedy humans, but were described as being greedy themselves too. From a Buddhist perspective, they seem to take the role of the jester or clown who pokes fun at the greedy ego, so it sees itself reflected clearly and decides to abate its selfish ways. However, Mario is often the total opposite of this. He is only shown as being honest, a good friend to others, etc. A more fitting character for this greedy trickster role is, of course, Wario. In Super Mario Land 2, Wario's first appearance, the whole struggle arises from Wario wanting his own castle, and thus stealing Mario's own. Instead of changing the sign on the castle, it just spins around to form a W out of the M, but it's still the same sign. Psychoanalytically, Wario is a clear shadow version of Mario. He is all the stuff that Mario's personality doesn't include. They are, at this level, the same person, or parts of one same psyche. So if Tanuki can shapeshift into humans, could the whole Mario series be a marionette show put on by Tanuki gods? Luigi, Bowser, Peach, all of them different disguises of one same deity? Or maybe there's another possibility. People who can transform into animals and use mushrooms for heroic journeys are usually shamans. <laughs>